move on to now is looking at the impacts of climate change on ecosystems and species, looking both at those impacts we've seen happening already as climate has changed, and then looking to the future. What do the future impacts look like as climate change progresses further? So turning first to observed impacts. First, it's really important to note that detection of observed impacts to climate change that's been experienced up to now is quite hard. And that's because, of, first of all, the relatively small changes in climate compared to those that we expect in the future, and also the many compounding factors that affect changes in ecosystems, such as land use change and other, other forms of land use. One of the main ways that we think we're seeing changes in, in, in ecosystems is through changes in phenology. And this is, as we said earlier, the seasonal timing of specific plant and animal processes that are driven by changes in temperature normally and also changes in rainfall through the seasonal cycle. For example, in South Africa, the timing of arrival and departure of migratory bird species has changed quite a bit. They are tending to, many of them, arrive um, earlier and, and leave earlier as well. In, also in Southern Africa, there's been some observed uh, dieback or actually death of, of some particular tree species. Um, an example is euphorbia in northern South Africa. Now, the direct cause of that death of, of, of many of these trees is actually fungal infection, so a fungus that's actually killing, um, killing the, the trees. But evidence suggests that the sensitivity of the trees to those fungal infections has been increased by heightened heat stress and also by water stress. So when it's hot and dry and drought conditions, um, these trees tend to die, die more because of the fungus and therefore the more frequent heat stress events and drought conditions that we've seen are leading to greater vulnerability. The second type of response that we have detected in some instances in shift, is shifts in the boundaries between different biomes and ecoregions. So for example, um, we, see, we might expect and see a drying uh, leading to woodlands being replaced by grassland dominant ecosystems and evergreen forests being replaced by deciduous forests as the conditions dry out. There's some evidence from West Africa that grasslands are expanding southwards, so replacing woodlands with, with grasslands, but the correlation with the climate changes, changes that have been observed are not very strong. So it might actually not be a climate change signal that we're actually seeing, but maybe due to some other uh, human influence on, on the vegetation, possibly changes in the intensity of land use. In southern and east Africa, we're actually seeing the opposite effect. So we're seeing shrub and tree encroachment into grasslands. So the grasslands that we use for grazing are now being converted into forests or at least shrublands. Here, the mechanism isn't directly climate driven, but people think that it's due to a combination of the fertilization effects of higher levels of carbon dioxide and changes in fire frequency. The mechanism for that is essentially that carbon dioxide fertilization makes the trees grow faster and they can then um, survive fires more easily because they reach what is called an escape height. They're tall enough that they don't get burnt by, by grass, grassland fires. And the second is that the, uh, there's been a change in the intensity of, of fires. So there's been less sort of natural burning and also less forced burning by traditional rangeland farmers that has then led to reduced fire frequency and it gives the trees that are already growing faster more chance to grow before the next fire comes along. Now we're uncertain whether this will continue as climate changes because at the moment there's been very little actual change in rainfall in these in these areas but the projected changes are for increased drying in the future and this might actually favor grass grasses in terms of being better suited to drier conditions, and actually also drier conditions lead to more intense fires. So we may well see there that in areas that where the drying occurs, that the uh, that the encroachment actually stops. We're not sure. In areas of southern Africa where the projections are for wetter conditions, then it may well be that this encroachment continues and is maybe even accelerated as the climate change progresses. Another 
interesting and potential observed impact of climate change relates to provisioning of food by forests for rural communities in southern Africa. And this is through a species of insect called Mopani. Um, they go through a, a typical insect life cycle of eggs, then worms, then uh, going into a pupa stage, and then obviously the Mopani moths. So that cycle um, provides food at virtually all stages of the cycle. Um, and what the, what's been well documented throughout um, Southern Africa, especially Botswana, but also Zimbabwe, Northern South Africa and Namibia, is quite a marked reduction in the frequency of occurrence of these Mopani worms in the Mopani vegetation that, within which they occur. Now, these Mopani worms are really important as a natural uh, protein source for, for communities that generally are quite protein poor. Um, so this is a very important dietary supplement, but it's also an important source of income for many women who, are, uh, who don't have other sources of income in these rural areas because they can harvest the Mopani worms and then sell them in the markets and it gives them an alternative income. The reasons for the decline in Mopani have not really been clearly proven. Um, it's quite hard because there aren't really good systematic observations. But local communities in interviews um, suggest that at the same time as the decline in the presence of Mopani worms, there have been much more frequent dry spells and the drought years have got better. So it looks like there's certainly a correlation between the decrease in, in Mopani and climate, but maybe we can't get to uh, causation at this stage. And it may well be that other factors are also affecting this, perhaps over overgrazing and of the Mopani trees by goats um, in drought conditions as well. So that's a f those are a few examples of some of the observed changes that we've seen, um, due observed changes in ecosystems that we've seen um, over Africa. Um, if we compare that to evidence from outside of Africa, there are many more instances of evidence of changes in ecosystem that are directly linked to climate. That's probably not because uh, African ecosystems aren't responding, but because the measurements and observations in Africa are much less comprehensive than in some other parts of the world, and also that there have just been fewer studies that have analysed the data that are actually available. Mm -hmm.